disenfranchising kids, pushing them away, um, not listening to them. That's been going on for years and that has to stop because I think we absolutely have to listen to what they have to say and we have to react. My name is Jessica Rasmussen. I'm a now the co-founder and CEO of a company called Two Magnolias Limited. This company has been set up as an investment fund with my business partner, Marie. Uh, both of us have banking backgrounds. I was in banking for 30 years and Marie was in banking for 20 years. And we felt that we were at the stage in our life that we wanted to alter um, our sort of perspective on life and, and our work-life balance. So we started this investment fund and we have two primary goals. One is to invest in companies that are focused on sustainability. And the other one is to focus on companies that have human longevity um, at their core. So those are the two main areas that we're focused on. I was born in Sri Lanka, but we, my parents um, and I came to the UK um, when I was very young. Um, I did sort of four or five years here in the UK, up in Liverpool, and then, uh, you know, so my parents worked there. And then um, when I was about five, my father got a job in Hong Kong and we moved to Hong Kong as a family. My, my brother had been born then, uh, by then. And um, we lived there for sort of seven or eight years. So I was very fortunate to get the sort of early years in the UK, moved over to Hong Kong and experienced, a, you know, in those days, Hong Kong was a very sort of um, kind of expat orientated, um, melting pot of people from lots of different nations, particularly, you know, in the Asia, that Asia Pacific region. Um, and sort of, you know, did my primary years there. And then when I was 12, um, we moved back to the UK and I completed my education. And basically I've been here ever since. Um, and that was around sort of 1980. So we, I went to school in Wimbledon, I went to Wimbledon High and we, um, you know, sort of grew up in a very traditional, you know, family um, kind of ecosystem in in sort of southwest London and um, thoroughly enjoyed it. I mean, I, you know, it was it was tough, I felt when I came to the UK because I sort of enjoyed a bit more of a um, uh, an international lifestyle, if you like. And I felt when I came here, it was quite closed and tightly knitted and, and there was sort of little you know um already formed gangs of of girls that you know I had to sort of break into um and form my own friendship groups etc but but it you know it was relatively straightforward and I was very fortunate you know I had a, a very nice platform from which from which to to you know be educated um what was I like as a, as a young girl I mean I think I was probably as I am now quite sort of extroverted and and um you know, quite sort of, you know, uh, full of life. Um, you know, I love having fun. And we always uh, kind of, you know, when I was growing up, my myself and my friends always kind of had that as our, as our core. I probably wasn't as studious as I should have been when I was growing up. You know, I was uh, um, very much into my school friends, but also I was, you know, member of the local youth club and, you know, I'd be out and about the whole time. But, but uh, you know, I was, I was fortunate that in those days, I feel now compared to, compared to, to what students have to go through now, that the pressure, um, the exam pressure wasn't as intense as it is now, or the, the, the pressure to sort of, you know, come out with the top grades wasn't as intense. Um, what was interesting is also that I come from a, a big family of, of doctors and engineers and professionals and, and I knew from a very young age that I really didn't want to go down that route. So I felt probably by default that I had less pressure 
than maybe some of my my sort of cousins and other family members who are really striving to become doctors and well you know you still had to get kind of the absolute top grades to be able to to, to do medicine um was that a bit of rebellion? Probably, you know, I, I, I sort of, you know, didn't really want to go down that path. I felt there was a lot of undiscovered career paths out there. Not that I really knew what they were, but I felt that, you know, the, the world was had got to be bigger and brighter than just, um, you know, doing the same thing that my sort of mother and my aunts and, 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 and family members had done. I think there's no question. I mean, for, for all of the young people out there, particularly sort of the Gen Z, Gen Alpha um, contingent, I think they have really taught all of us that um, the, you know, their key drivers and, and key focus in life is not uh, the excesses of, of the sort of, 20, 30 years that you and I might have grown up in, in uh, business or banking. Um, very much the focus of this generation, from what I can gather from my own sons and from, you know, children of my friends and then, you know, kids that I come into contact with, that they have the planet and their way of life as their primary focus. Um, they are very considerate. It's a, it's a very considerate generation. Um, they're very socially conscious. They are fully aware of the uh, limitations of our sort of planet um, as, it, as it stands. Um, and they, you know, are really beating the drum louder uh, on, in, in this particular area than I've probably ever seen as any single theme, particularly in my 30 years in banking. I think this, this the, it's, it's really like a sort of thundering, um, you know, um, a horde of, of, of students who are demanding change. Now, the problem, you know, that you have when you're a student is that you can, you can speak and you can shout and you can, and you can cry and you can sort of put your hand in the air and ask people to listen. Uh, but if we as adults don't listen and don't respond, then, you know, it becomes very frustrating for them and, and positive momentum turns into negative negativity. You know, people change, you know, kids change the way in which they think about the world. And I didn't want that to happen. I have two children of my own. Um, you know, they themselves are very um, socially aware um, and they're very aware of, of what's happening um, globally. And I think, I, I, mean, I think it's very obvious. So both Marie and I felt, she has children as well, felt that we, if we were going to do anything and if we were going to invest in, in any particular area, sustainability had to be at least one part of our drivers. We, we have no choice because if we don't do it, who's going to help? Now, we are just a small investment fund you know, starting out and hopefully over the next sort of three to five years, we will grow and our influence will grow and, and we'll get to where we want to go. But, but, but just because you're small doesn't mean that you can't join in. And I know there are huge global funds now who are really focused on this and who are really pressing hard and have much greater firepower than we have. But we didn't feel that it was, we wanted to leave this to somebody else. Um, and what's very interesting is that however small you are, the amount of interest that we're getting just in our, you know, the way in which we're approaching things and we're doing, um, you know, looking at companies, et cetera. Um, it's, it, you know, people are definitely taking notice. So I think um, we felt it was a, an obligation actually, as opposed to a choice um, to get involved. And I'm, and I'm glad that we have. <laughs> I think that it's very important, you know, people, um, I think, have gone full circle on the sort of Extinction Rebellion, Greta Thunberg, you know, movement that started last year. Um, and and I, it really saddens me, actually, that that's the case, because 
uh, you know, adults are very fickle and, and you know, they get bored after a while. And I see that with my own sort of ex-colleagues and with my own um you know, network that, you know, there are certain themes that are sort of in vogue and everyone's sort of focusing on Greta or they're focusing on 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 big demonstrations outside of, you know, Parliament, you know, whichever part of the world, whether it's Germany or the, even the UK, etc. And then after a while, it sort of dies away and we move on to something else. Now, I understand COVID has been a big issue and, and obviously um, we're all we're all still sort of struggling with that dynamic. Um, but it's it's it really, uh, you know, concerns me that we could end up, particularly when COVID goes away, that we sort of end up, oh, we, you know, forgetting um, that people and children were so, the younger generation was so passionate about this. So we're not prepared for that to happen. We don't, we, you know, we, we want um, and we applaud, um, you know, people like Greta Thunberg and, and her various colleagues in various different countries. Um, and, and we don't want it to go away. And I think disenfranchise, disen, you know, disenfranchising kids, pushing them away, um, not listening to them, that, you know, that's been going on for years. Um, and that has to stop because I think we absolutely have to listen to what they have to say and we have to react. When I was doing my A-levels and I was applying, looking at university courses, etc., cetera, I um, wanted to do a sort of vocational, vocationally based sort of degree, something which I knew that I could really use when I went into the workplace. Now, even now, how much of it do I really use? I mean, I don't know, but I, I definitely had exposure from some of, you know, the most talented lecturers and teachers kind of at the, you know, at the time. Um, so I chose a very good quality course from a, from the University of Warwick. And when I went into that course, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. And that in those days, management consultancy was the big buzz. You know, those, that was the big buzz career. And that's what everybody wanted to get into because it was a way of sort of going into, you know, parachuting into big companies, telling them what to do and then parachuting out again. And there were a lot of, um, and, and it was also one of the most difficult careers to get into. And there were a lot of people who were really very keen on that. I was less so. I definitely wanted to, um, money was a big driver and, and also a career where I really didn't have to sit in an office every day um, in a closed office where I had little contact with people and um, you know little interaction that just wasn't me I mean you know sort of lawyers accountants especially who who are sort of doing very very technically demanding and challenging jobs and and who do very well because they have professional qualifications um, I just couldn't see myself in that role so for me banking in those days felt like a, a sort of broad enough career path that once I was in, I could kind of, I had a vast number of choices within it. The one thing that I've really learned from, is that to, to have a long successful career, and I and I, I think my career was moderately successful. You know, I mean, I think there are other people who have had more success. But what one thing it was was enjoyable. I enjoyed every single moment. There were down moments, there were up moments, but over 30 years, I had the time of my life. And now I have a new career where I'm having a lot of fun. So for me, that you know, that's what keep that's what I wake up to every morning is having fun and enjoying what you're doing and making sure you know that you're making a difference seek seek out mentors seek out people that you can learn from and that you admire and that you aspire to be with or be you know close to and reach out to them broaden your networks speak to people um, and then you know the answers will come naturally